I know in this video, we're going to talk about the post earnings announcement shift, which is from the paper Bernard and Thomas, 1989. So post earnings announcement shift is how the stock price moves uh, before an earnings announcement and after the earnings announcement. Um, but how are the companies sorted? So companies that beat earnings typically have big positive post earnings announcement shift, while those that miss earnings significantly typically have a big negative post earnings announcement shift. The mechanism is prominent when a lot of big institutions focus on stock and react to the company's earnings. In 1989, the drift could take months to develop. In 1989 and before, when they wrote this paper, Bernard and Thomas, um, the drift could take months to develop due to informational inefficiencies. We also replicated this paper with Python code that you're familiar with. And uh, please feel free to watch that video if you'd like to replicate this paper yourself. So first of all, what is the research question? The research questions are as follows. First, to what extent do firms who beat analyst earnings expectations by the most have their price drift up before the earnings announcement and after the earnings announcement? And then the second half of the research question is to what extent do firms who miss analyst earnings expectations by the most have their price drift down before the earnings announcement and after the earnings announcement? Uh, so let's look at Bernard and Thomas 1989. In the figure presented on page 10 of their paper, you can see that there's a run-up two months before the earnings announcement. For the firms with the biggest SUE, which is uh, actual earnings minus analyst expectations over the standard deviation of analyst expectations, their stock price gets run up prior to the earnings announcement. Similarly, for stocks that miss, uh, and this the most, their stocks get run down before the earnings announcement. In the post-announcement period, uh, which was two months after the earnings announcement, the cumulative return is biggest for the 10th decile, that is for the firms that beat by the most, and smallest for the first decile, that is firms that missed by the most. Note that contrary to it being one or two weeks, the post-earnings announcement was actually two months. The, the post-earnings announcement drift period was actually two months in their 1999 paper. Okay, so now let's look at table one on page 14 of the paper. So consider the holding period of 421 days to 480 days. So we're talking about more than a year. And by the way, during that time, there would have been multiple other earnings announcements. So for high SUE firms, that is for firms that beat analyst earnings by the analyst earnest earnings expectations by the most, the small firms seem to revert back starting at about eight months. For high SUE big firms, the reversal happens even earlier because presumably bigger firms tend to attract more attention from big institutional investors and have bigger analyst followings. More analyst followings mean that the stock price of a big company is priced in faster than the stock price of a smaller company. Okay, now let's look at table one in our replication. And this replication is from our, our video where we uh, code post earnings as drift for Thomas 1989 from scratch. In 2022, the small firms drift and reversal happened faster than before. The drift develops from one to 15 days instead of the eight months observed in Bernard and Thomas, 1989. The drift also takes about 15 days to develop for big firms. Interestingly, big firms have larger reactions than small firms. Consider this. Why is the return for small firms in the lowest decile smaller than it is for big firms in the lowest decile? Uh, negative 2.9 versus negative 2.5. It's because it's relatively e easy, or in many cases, it's easier to short a big company than it is a small company. And the, the reason for that is a huge number of institutional investors own the stock of big companies. So borrowing is less difficult because there's greater supply of shares. It is harder to short a smaller stock before an earnings announcement, resulting in a more pronounced drop after an earnings announcement for the small companies in the lowest decile. And so now, do you know why I'm spending your time going through this paper? So one strategy that hedge funds employ now is to focus on unstructured text and specifically like SEC filings as an investment strategy. However, computers can't really tell you what's happening in text in the complex. Our computers can't really read text and, and certainly not for SEC filings, resulting in a lot of alpha remaining in the unstructured text from the quarterly and annual filings. Given that we believe there's a lot of alpha left in the text, hedge funds are likely spending a lot of time going through the text to parse the filings and make sense of them. And the release dates of the earnings announcements and the release of the 10 Qs and the 10 Ks are sometimes uh, synchronized. Thus, an important question for hedge fund managers is to what extent are the returns of their algorithms correlated with post earnings announcement drift? If the hedge fund is picking up the post 
earnings not to interrupt effect, institutional investors may not be interested in investing um, because, you know, post earnings not to interrupt is a relatively common risk factor and big institutional investors will want something that's uncorrelated from these common risk factors. Therefore, the point of going over this paper is to understand the post earnings announcement trip in order to be able to discern whether or not the alpha that you're producing in your papers is simply a result of the post earnings announcement trip or whether it really is uncorrelated with post earnings announcement trip and the other common risk factors. Okay, so now let's look at table three in our replication. Uh, not dissimilar to hedge fund managers proving that their alpha is uncorrelated with post earnings announcement drift. Bernard and Thomas, 1989, had to prove that the post earnings announcement drift was uncorrelated with the asset pricing model. In our replication, we replaced their model with the Fama French five factors. We used regressions to find out to what extent the cumulative abnormal return correlated with the Fama French five factors. The only thing is that is significant is the intercept, which shows that post earnings announcement drift is a risk factor that is distinct from the Fama French five factors. This is also true in the original paper. So what's interesting is that post earnings announcement drift was a risk factor back in 1989, 1989, and it's still a risk factor in 2022. So let's look at, um, our replications, total, uh, annualized cumulative raw returns for bad news and good news portfolios for bad news firms they perform terribly in the one to five days after earnings announcement and for the good news firms they perform very well and the good performance is mainly concentrated in small stocks so that concludes our um introduction to the post earnings announcement shift bernard and thomas 1989 if you would like to learn more about this risk factor i strongly recommend that you try to replicate it on your own and our video um how to replicate post earnings announcement drift Bernard and Thomas 1989 from scratch using Python will be a very helpful tool. So I recommend you watch that video if you want to learn more about post earnings announcement drift. Thank you so much and have a great day.